the timing moment for the Cobra Class 26 sewing machine is one eighth of an inch past the bottom dead center, at which point the tip of the hook must be perfectly aligned with the center of the needle shaft exactly one eighth inch above the top of the eye. When we're talking about the past bottom dead center, with the hand wheel moving in the forward direction toward the operator, the needle will go up and come back down. It will continue going up and come back down. So every time the needle cycles to the top, that is the top dead center, and as it's descending back toward the bobbin or the feed system, it is now past the top dead center. Once it enters the throat and goes to the very bottom of the stroke, that is now the bottom dead center, and as it starts rising at one eighth of an inch, this is the key moment. That moment is called the timing moment. That's the magic moment when things start to happen, where the, the needle and the hook come together, and then the beginning of the knot making process starts to happen. As this hook revolves past the needle, it's going to grab that needle thread and wrap it around the bobbin and tie the little knot. The reason you're watching this video is that it's very likely that your machine is not picking up that bobbin thread when you're cycling the machine to start your sewing. You're going, oh no, how do I fix my machine? And somebody may have referred you to this channel. So understanding how that works is paramount to being able to move forward from this moment. The timing moment for the Cobra Class 26 sewing machine is exactly one eighth of an inch past the bottom dead center, at which point now we're getting forward of our last explanation, aren't we? At which point the tip of the hook must be lined up directly in the center of the needle shaft, one eighth of an inch above the top of the eye. Okay, so let's get into some close up with the saw machine so we can see exactly what those things are and get on our way toward good sewing machine maintenance. So just for the sake of the discussion that we're having, we have to define a couple things, okay? So this component right here is the needle bar, and this is the needle itself, okay? So let's watch the machine cycle. So the machine cycles with the needle coming down, and then see the needle bar is getting longer, and the needle shaft itself is disappearing down into the hole. So now, the needle starts cycling down, and the shaft is getting longer. And see the needle has disappeared down into the throat. Okay, the little hole where the needle goes down is called the throat of the machine. Okay, and that part that happens to have a hole in it where the needle is going down, that's the feed dock. The needle is all the way down in there. And what's happening inside the machine is the hook is coming and about to grab the tip of the hook and make up the timing moment one eighth of an inch past the bottom dead center. So now, see right here the needle is at the bottom and it's going to rise up one eighth of an inch and the magic moment where the hook and the needle come together is happening inside the machine. Okay, so now we're changing a little bit of our perspective. So right now we're looking inside of the bobbin compartment. There's a little door that covers the bobbin. We slide it open just like this. Okay, and now we're looking inside the compartment and we can see the hook body. There's the point of the hook. Obviously that's our bobbin and the bobbin latch. Okay, and here's our bobbin thread coming out from the bobbin. Okay, so as the machine cycles, this hook spins around and it's going to reach the timing moment with the needle and it all happens back inside and under this throat plate. But for the sake of conversation, we're going to look at it right now. Okay, so here goes. The hook is spinning. Can you see the tip right here that it's at 3 o'clock right now and it's moving closer to 6. And then it disappears underneath the throat plate. And here it comes. Now the hook is at 12 o'clock way up here. Okay, now the needle's descending into the throat. There's the hook again at 3 o'clock. The needle is reaching the bottom of the stroke and now it's coming up and now the hook is lined up with the needle. 
Okay, we can't see, so we have to open up the machine so that you can see better. Okay, so here we go. Give me a moment and we'll talk about that. Now the needle is going to rise up out of the throat and the cycle starts again. Okay, so now we've shifted to the operator's left hand side of the machine and we're looking down the machine toward the hand wheel. Can you see the perspective? And we are looking at the end of the cylinder arm. Okay, this component has two different names because it serves two different features. One of them is that it's the throat plate. The very top of it is the throat plate. And then the side is a side cover. It comes off with these two screws here at three and nine o'clock. So let's do that real quick. Now, to remove the plate, what we have to do is lift it straight up and then swing the bottom out and away at about a 45 degree angle. So up, out, and away. Now let's look at the inside of it and see that notch. Remember we were talking about the um, hook body and the tab and the notch on the throat plate. So that notch and then the tab. Let's Okay, here's the cover and the tab and the notch. Okay, so here we're going to put it back so you kind of watch it go back together. That little tab and the cover have to re -come, uh, come back together when we finally make the final assembly. Up, away, notice the notch and the tab that have to go back together. Very important. So now, see the point of the hook is at 6 o'clock. And the needle is still up. Okay, so the needle is going to cycle. The hook is going past. Here comes the needle. It descends into the throat. And you can see it sticking out underneath the feed dog. You see the tip of the needle right there? Okay, there it is. And here comes the point of the hook. Now the point is at 6 o'clock right here. And the needle is approaching the very bottom dead center. You can clearly see the scarf right there. Now here comes the needle and it starts to ascend. And as it ascends, the tip of the hook lined up with the needle. Okay, so now how do we measure this stuff? This is going to be the tricky part, so bear with me and we'll get to that. Okay, okay I'm going to remove the feed dog just so it makes it easier for you to see on camera what's going on. Okay, so this particular piece is the feed dog. That's the throat. Here's the surface of the dog. On typical sewing machines, they have serrated teeth on them. That's why we call them feed dog, but the leather machine company hot rods their machines and polishes those off. So this feed dog itself is attached to this little cam down here, and this little set screw is what holds it in place. So we're going to remove that set screw. Okay. And then the feed dog will basically come right out as long as the needle is in the up position. Okay, so that goes the feed dog. So there it is right there. You see? There you go. That's the feed dog, and that's the smooth surface and the throat. Okay, so now what do we see here? There's the needle, and as it dis descends, it goes all the way to the bottom, and then the hook lines up right in the center. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take on a slightly different perspective and hopefully communicate an easier way to film this. So what I've got is a magic handy dandy Alpine for leather business card. Don't be jealous. I know you want one. There's my phone number if you really need me. But we're going to use the back. A clear blank business card and a magic small point sharpie. Okay, there that little tiny point is. So you see this bracket right here where we can brace evenly? What we're going to do is we're going to set the card right on that bracket. Okay, and make a tiny little mark at the very bottom of the thread guide. You see that little guide? A little tiny mark? Okay, now I'm going to take my ruler I see myself. Okay. 
and I'm going to make another mark one eighth of an inch above that. There's my new mark. Okay, I'm going to put my card back right up against my edge guide in the same place. Can you see? That's one eighth of an inch above. And now I'm going to cycle the needle bar to the new position. Okay, and now look, the tip of the hook is lining up in the center of the needle, one eighth of an inch above the top of the eye. So this is the timing moment. The sewing machine has a couple different timing moments that we were talking about before. The hook and needle have to come in together at a particular moment, but is the hook out of time or is the needle position out of place? So I was sewing along and, or I started sewing and then the thread slipped out of my hand and suddenly the machine locked up and it wouldn't move anymore. I couldn't turn the hand wheel at all. So I reached in there with my snippers and opened up the bobbin compartment. It's all full of thread and all bound up. Okay, well that's probably indicative of the machine being bound up on the hook and slipping the hook. Whereas the opposite story, I was sewing along and I hit a rivet. Wow, I didn't even realize that my needle could go right through that rivet. Bent the needle, I changed the needle, and now it won't pick up the thread, which is the exact opposite problem with the fouled bobbin. Now you've got a suspected needle bar out of position scenario. So right now we're talking about the hook being out of position and the inspection of the hook. But either way, what we're going to do is we're going to look at the position of the hook and determine if it's in time with the needle or not. Then we're going to look at the needle and look at the eye and this little part called the deflector. It's right here. I can't tell right now if I'm looking at it, but it's right here. It looks like a little wave and it's directly underneath the point of the hook. Can you see that, Pam? Can you see? Oh, look at Pam coming in with the close-up. You see this little wave? That little bracket that looks like a wave and the eye in the timing moment is just about level with the bottom of the eye and the top of the hook I mean top of the deflector okay so if we rise up one eighth of an inch past the bottom dead center and we see that the eye is way up above the deflector we are going to suspect that the needle bar is out of position. If we come one eighth of an inch past bottom dead center and the hook is way over here at six o'clock, then we suspect that the hook is late or retarded in time. It's behind schedule, which we suspect that now the hook has been shifted out of position. Either one, it's cool because now we have a path to follow. So let's go with the scenario that's most common, and that is that the hook is out of position because of a thread snag. And now look right here, directly underneath the hook, there's this little cover plate, little rectangular shaped cover plate with two little screws. That's going to be our access point. One screw, two screws. Okay, now we're looking up through the inspection door underneath the hook compartment and we're looking at a gear and a set screw. Okay, So what you have here is the main shaft comes down the cylinder from the hand wheel side and then spins and turns this gear. The gear up above it is a horizontal gear that's spinning the hook. Okay, So this is the place where we're going to adjust the timing. Okay, so when we notice the hook is out of position, basically we're going to reach a three millimeter Allen wrench up in here and loosen that one screw. Okay, you have a three millimeter that came with your toolkit, but you see this ball end, that little ball on the end? Well, it seems like a really good idea to use that ball end socket in that screw, that is the worst thing you could do. 
absolutely do not use the ball end of the Allen screw that came with, or the Allen key that came with your machine in that Allen, or you'll break the ball off and have to ship your machine to the leather machine company to get it out of there. So what we want to do is use the straight side, okay, the regular side without the ball, stick it in there and loosen that Allen. The unfortunate reality is that you, there's three of those on that on that uh, gear too, and then there's the third one, see? So you have to do that three different times. Loosen them up, cycle the machine into the timing moment with all your magic new tools, measuring devices and everything, so that your needle bar is in the timing moment position. The hook will be loose, you'll be able to grab the whole thing and spin it around, line it up to where the hook is centered in the center of the needle shaft, by pivoting it around. You know that the needle bar is in position. Adjust the position of the hook, tighten the screws underneath. Inspect it two or three times to make sure that you've done a good job setting the hook timing relative to the needle, and then tighten everything up, put it back together. When you put the side cover on, don't forget to engage the bobbin case tab and the little notch underneath the throat plate, get it all put back together, give it a test so, and you're probably in good shape. Okay, so you understand how that works from the hook's perspective. Now let's talk about it in the opposite scenario from the needle side. Remember those two little funny stories, the two different uh, malfunction scenarios? One of them was thread jammed up and binding up the hook. So we've gone over that process and how to eliminate that. Now let's talk about the other scenario is sewing along and ran the needle into the rivet or into the belt buckle or whatever was there and bent and broke the needle, had a catastrophic failure, and now the needle won't the needle won't pick up the bobbin thread. Okay? So now the force that went into the machine is exactly the opposite. In the first scenario, seizing up the the hook stops the machine because the hook gets bound up with the thread and all of that inertial force goes all the way back toward the hand wheel and freezes up the machine so we know that the gear on the hook shaft has spun and now we have we've resolved that and put it all back but the opposite scenario the force is interacting with the machine in the opposite direction so the needle comes down and gets interrupted with a catastrophic failure, usually a broken needle, boom! And then that force goes jamming up through the system and across back over to the hand wheel, back to the same destination of the hops in the machine. But the force is going in from two different directions. In this current scenario, the force is being jammed up the needle bar and something's gotta give. Okay, well, the needle bar is held with a clamp and the set screw that holds friction on the side of the needle shaft, needle bar shaft, and then that bar gets pushed out of position. So it's a relatively easy fix. But now let's talk about the fine details of how to correct the situation. Inside this side cover is the needle bar and all of the other associated upper mechanism. Okay, now that we have the, the door open and out of the way, we're going to look at this frame right here. It rocks back and forth with the cycle of the machine. So let's take a look at how that how, how that moves. See, it's pivoting back and forth, making the needle pendulum. Okay, and if you see the needle bar, it rides all the way up, disappears all the way up into this bushing, and then it comes back down. Okay. Now, if you look inside that little hole, with the magic of flashlight technology, you can see the head of the screw in there. Can you see that little screw in the back? That is the needle bar clamping screw. So when we do our needle hook timing inspection and we cycle the machine to where the needle is in the timing moment at one eighth of an inch past bottom dead center and the hook is in position but the eye of the needle is way up here. 
Okay, so let's get into the timing one. Da, da, da. Here comes the hook. And there's the timing moment. So this machine is perfectly in time with the the eye just level with the needle deflector, this little wave. Okay, and the hook is there at the same time. Okay, we know that that's in time. But if the eye was way up, maybe an eighth of an inch or a quarter inch above the hook, but we've cycled to the proper time, that we can tell that the needle bar is out of position. So we reach in there, turn that screw, lower the needle bar into position, tighten it up, and then re-inspect our timing moment, inspecting the needle bar. What we want to do is make sure that in the timing moment that only about half of the eye is exposed. So if you look through the eye, you'll see that the deflector, this little wave of material right here, is only covering about half of the eye up. Okay, if it goes too much lower, then it's going to cut the thread all the time. And if it's not here, if it's up high, then the needle bar is clearly out of position. So, again, loosen the screw, position the rod, the needle shaft, tighten it back up, and reassemble the machine. It's a pretty simple way of doing things, but we have to diagnose properly. Okay, understanding the timing moment is critical. So what's the rule again? The timing moment for the Cobra Class 26 sewing machine is one eighth of an inch past bottom dead center, at which point the tip of the hook must line up directly in the center of the needle shaft. Okay, that's how that piece of information is critical. If the hook is behind schedule, then it's out of time. So we go to the bottom compartment, loosen the Allen set screws, reposition the gear, tighten it back up, and reassemble the machine. The fine point there is to remember to get the tab on the bobbin case back underneath the throat plate. Okay? If we cycle the machine into the timing moment and the hook, the point, I'm sorry, the eye of the needle is way up high, then the bar is out of time, and we go into this little set screw here, loosen that up, position the bar, and retighten it. Hey, so up until this point, we've been talking about taking parts off. We haven't really put any of them back on. But the most important critical parts to put together, we kind of beat that subject to death with the throat plate and the notch and the bobbin case tab. So you already have an understanding of how to put that together. If I left this segment out, you would be fine probably. But we did not address the feed dog, this component. And the screw. Can you see this right here, Pat? You can see that? Okay, so there's a female recess there. And then over here in the machine, can you see right over here? There's a male segment that has to line up. So it goes right back in there, pretty straightforward. Just lines up and sets over that space. And then there's the screw hole. Do, 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 do. Get the screw in there. I've got big fat fingers. Luckily, I've got a gross overgrown fingernail. Get that first turn. And then just kind of set the screw in. Pretty straightforward. Here's the trick you don't want to over tighten this stuff, okay? Just at the beginning, because you want to be able to adjust the elevation of the feed dock. Okay, so now we're going to deal with our throat plate, the notch, and the tab. So we line the tab up, give it the old tip, slide in, put it down, and then we want to look and make sure the tab is engaged. There it is. Okay, now these two long screws. It's just a screw. Tighten it up, get it in there. Okay, now the feed dog, what we want to do is we have to adjust the elevation. Okay, so we what we do is we cycle the machine until the dog comes up to its highest point. Okay, and it's way too low. So I'm just going to reach my tip of my driver in and underneath the dog and just kind of slide it up. Okay. Oh, wow, that's too high. Darn. So I just kind of help come back down. If it's too tight to push it, just loosen it a teeny bit. Push it into position. Too low again. Uh-oh. 
reach under, lever it up. You want it up about two business cards thick above the uh, throat plate and then cinch it up for real. Okay, get it in there and that's it. If the, the feed dog is too high, what it'll do is it'll come out of the throat too early. Okay, see how it's going? It's down below, it's traveling back toward the operator and then it comes up, engages the material and then moves away. But if the feed dog is up too high, it'll ultimately push the material toward the operator before it moves away. It's called back feeding. It's um, not really a problem. It just makes the leather move funny and it's no fun at that point. So I guess we can summarize. We've done a lot of stuff here. I've beaten a couple points to death. The timing moment rule, I've said multiple times you should probably have a log book and take notes and internalize that information. Understanding the details of the timing moment rule is the most important thing here because once you understand that, the parts are easy to reposition, but you have to understand the why of it all and the timing moment rule pretty much lays it all out there. All right, this is your friend Al Bain, Al Bain for Leather. I'm gonna sign off. I'm gonna let you know a couple little things that we've done. We've set up a little Patreon if you wanna support the channel at all. Um, we've never asked anything like that, but we've been going through COVID and you know, businesses having a, 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 it's impacting everyone. So we've got a little Patreon if you wanna subscribe there. We're gonna make a couple different tiers and make it more attractive so that you can involve yourself there. Um, please do the thumbs up and like this video here in YouTube and uh, share the videos to all your friends. If you have a friend who's having a sewing machine problem, invite them to join the tips and tricks and they can get good sound advice there. Um, you only, only ask for one thing and that is that you please pay it forward. Yeah.